Hello and welcome to The Old Flyers. Lately, I've been posting videos about an exciting time in aviation design, a time when men of vision were driving business and engineering, men who made it happen. That reminded me of a story told by a former boss of mine. He said, there are three sorts of people in this world. The first person said, I had an idea and I made it happen. The second sort of person said, I was part of the team that made it happen, whilst the third sort said, what the f*** happened? I believe Noel Pemberton Billing and Hubert Scott Payne definitely belonged in the first group. Noel founded Pemberton Billing Limited in 1913, and that became Super Marine Aviation Works Limited in 1916, when Hubert Scott Payne took it over. Super Marine went on to design and build progressively successful aircraft. Scott Payne's good fortune was to hire Reginald Joseph Mitchell. It seemed as if it was ordained. Reginald Mitchell was born in Staffordshire, UK in 1895, years before powered controlled flight was demonstrated by the Wright brothers. Reginald attended Hanley High School where he developed an interest in making and flying model aircraft as many young boys do. In 1911, he left school at the age of 16, working as an apprentice for Kerr, Stewart and Company of Fenton, a railway engineering works. There he worked in the drawing office whilst studying engineering and mathematics at a local technical college. At this early age, he showed a talent for mathematics. Five years later, at age 21, he joined Supermarine at Southampton, working through a probationary period. The company specialised in building flying boats, producing its first aircraft, the Pemberton Billing PV-1, in 1914. During the First World War, Supermarine was taken over by the British government, and during this period, the company produced the first British single-seat flying boat fighter, the Supermarine Baby. On joining the company, Mitchell was given the opportunity to develop skills in a number of roles, such as draftsmen, gaining experience of the aircraft industry. The task of designing this new machine fell to Supermarine's chief designer, F.J. Hargreaves. Assisted by R.J. Mitchell, who had worked on the Nighthawk and the Navy plane, he designed and built the first single-seat flying boat to be operated by the United Kingdom. Whereas every previous design of flying boat had some sort of major unforeseen drawback, the Supermarine Baby was the first where everything seemed to mostly work straight away. Its hull was the tried and tested design by Linton Hope, who had built previous bodies for both Pemberton Billing and Supermarine by now, the previous problems with porpoising had been mostly overcome, and its redesigned step allowed it to get onto the water plane and stay on it much easier. His engineering training, competent mathematical skills, ability to think creatively, and intuition were soon recognised. By 1917, he became assistant to the company's owner and designer, Hubert Scott Payne. Mitchell is likely to have played a role in the development of the Supermarine Baby when, in 1919, it was adopted for racing for the Snyder Trophy and was renamed the Supermarine Sea Lion. When Supermarine's chief designer, William Hargraves, left the company in the summer of 1919, he was replaced by Mitchell, who took up his new duties later that year, leading a team of six draftsmen. He was appointed chief engineer in 1920. Following the departure of Scott Payne in November 1923, Mitchell was able to negotiate a new contract which led to greater influence in the company. He was now indispensable to Supermarine. Between 1920 and 1936, he designed 24 aircraft, which included flying boats and racing seaplanes, light aircraft, fighters and bombers. From 1925 to 1929, he worked on a series of racing seaplanes built by Supermarine to compete in the Snyder Trophy competition, the final entry in the series being the Supermarine S-6B. The S-6B won the trophy in 1931. Mitchell was authorised by Supermarine to proceed with a new design, the Type 300, which went on to become the Seafire. Many of the technical advances of the Spitfire were made by people other than Mitchell. The thin elliptical wings were designed by the Canadian aerodynamicist Beverly Shenstone. 
The underwing radiators had been designed by the Royal Aircraft Establishment and monocoque construction had been first developed in the United States. The Spitfire shared similarities with the Heinkel HE70 Blitz. Mitchell's achievement lay in the merger of these different influences into a single design, originating from his unparalleled expertise in high-speed flight and a brilliant engineering ability, exemplified in this instance by the incorporation of vital lessons learned from Supermarine's unsuccessful Type 224 fighter. Whilst the Type 224 was still being built in 1933, Mitchell was proceeding with the design of the Type 300. This was to become his masterpiece, the Supermarine Spitfire. He cleaned up the design of the Type 224 using the same engine but incorporating a shorter wing and a retractable undercarriage. The Air Ministry rejected Mitchell's design, but he modified it, for instance, by making the wing thinner and shorter, by including the newly designed Rolls-Royce Merlin engine, and by making use of an innovative new cooling system, the latter being an example of his willingness to accept ideas from other people. It was at this time that Mitchell was diagnosed with cancer. For a short period, design work continued using private funding, but in December 1934, the Air Ministry contracted Submarine to construct a prototype that was based on Mitchell's design. For a short period, design work continued using private funding, but in December 1934, the Air Ministry contracted Supermarine to construct a prototype that was based on Mitchell's design. Mitchell objected to the Air Ministry's insistence that the Spitfire be modified to have a tail wheel. Regarding wing shape, Mitchell was quoted as saying, I don't give a bugger whether the wing shape is elliptical or not, so long as it covers the guns. In June 1936, before the prototype had completed trials, the Air Ministry placed an order for 310 Spitfires. Mitchell was by nature a reserved and modest man, resentful of authority being imposed on him or of the routines of the workplace, and he was short-tempered and a difficult man to live with sometimes, it was said. He was known to say nothing unless there was something worth saying. Often, given full scope at Supermarine, he was a strict taskmaster who nevertheless struggled with the level of organisation needed for a company such as Supermarine. When the engineer Barnes Wallace was employed to improve the efficiency of Mitchell's department in 1930, Wallace had to be recalled after their personalities clashed. I can imagine. In 1936, Mitchell was diagnosed again with cancer and early the following year, was forced by his illness to give up work. He died at home in Highfield, Southampton in June 1937 at the age of 42. His obituary, published in the Journal of the Royal Aeronautical Society in 1937, described him as brilliant and one of the leading designers in the world. The Society paid tribute to their colleague, describing him as being a quiet, subtle, not obvious genius who had an intuitive capacity for grasping the essentials, getting to the point and staying there. In 1986, Mitchell was inducted into the International Air and Space Hall of Fame at the San Diego Air and Space Museum. Thank you for watching. Comments always welcome. Please like and subscribe to promote new content.